Now, do I really believe it? To the extent that I believe it, I have made my world change to conform to my ideal. If I really believe it is a dream, I can dream a daydream or a night dream. But I must be in control of the dream. Now, when a man takes a state, it's a daydream, and he sees a marquee, and it reads his name implying ownership of a certain building. It's all a dream. It's a daydream, granted. He knows exactly what he's doing. When he stands before that sign, and he sees the same sign, although no one else can see it, because it isn't there, the sign reads, F.N. Roach and Company. And he is looking at it, and he sees J.N. Goddard and Son, which would imply the Goddards own it, and they didn't have a dime. And for two years, he still is looking at that thing twice a day on the way to and the way back home. And he actually feels the thrill that would be his if what he is seeing is true. And two years later, an almost total stranger buys the building for him and takes only a piece of paper with his signature on it. For he had no money, no collateral. He said, I watch you, you and your father, and I trust you implicitly. Pay me 6% interest on the investment and reduce the principal every year for 10 years and have it all reduced in 10 years. Well, it was reduced in 10 years. And it was 6% paid to him in those days, 6% was a big return on your money. This goes back to the year 1922. And so that building became the family's building. It began as a dream. He never forgot the principle. If God does all things, well, he knows then who God is, because God did that. If by him all things are made, and without him was not anything made that was made, well, sure, he just came out of nothing. He had no money, no collateral, no one to whom he could turn. He only desired to own that building on the main street, at the corner, a wonderful corner. And out of the nowhere, he simply assumed it, and remained faithful to it, and then it became his. He took that principle and applied it from that moment on to everything that he touched in this world. For he discovered the creator of things in this world. For God and only God creates. is nothing but God. Well, if Jesus is the only God, but so am I, and so are you. And Jesus is the I am in every child born of woman. Well, then let him begin to exercise that talent. Let him begin to test it, to prove it, or disprove it. If you are faithful to it, you can't disprove it. So put on the shield of faith, you're told in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. Put on the shield of faith. It will now protect you from all the fiery darts of the wicked. If you think someone is out to get you, it's only part of your dream. You put on the shield of faith. Faith what? It's always faith in God. Was faith in yourself. That's faith in God. For the self of man is God. And that self is Jesus. And there is no other God. If you actually test it, you can't disprove it. So here is the story of Scripture. A deep, deep fell upon him. Well, if a deep, deep fell upon him, then who is the dreamer in the sleep? He tells you it is God. He doesn't tell you that you're not going to have nightmares. You'll have nightmares and daymares because you're learning to exercise a certain power. And you make mistakes. And you think these things on the outside are external to yourself and independent of your perception of them. And they're not. They're all yourself pushed out in your bad dreams and your misuse of this power. If you are ever in control of this power, you'll have nothing but harmony on the outside. But it will come in the very end when you awake from the dream. And in the very end, you are in control of the dream, because you know exactly who you are. And the whole vast world is yourself pushed out. All that you behold, though it appears without, it is within, in your own wonderful human imagination.
of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. The whole thing is yourself projected on the screen of space. So you start with a dream, a daydream. What do I want in this world? You ask yourself a very simple question. What do I want? The minute you know exactly what you want, start there. Don't look on the outside. And these shadows now may uh, offend you or they may oppose what you think you want. Then you give power to these shadows. Don't give power to the shadows. Any more than he did. He didn't have one red penny to put up as collateral, but nothing. And a total stranger comes in the day of the sale of that building and with this lawyer bids for it. No one knew who the lawyer was bidding for. But when it came out at the end of the day, that this is what happened. You should have heard the remarks in the island. It didn't matter one thing to him. Now, the building opposite, a far bigger building, the most expensive building, best located and bigger area than anything on the main street, owned by someone in the family for 20, 125 years. There were absentee owners in England. And my father would stand now in his own building and look across at that building. And the name was Harrison. Harrison. His name was Goddard. But he looked at that building and he wondered, wouldn't it be wonderful if I owned it? Well, came the year 1942 and England is at war. And those who owned it, living in England, he had a son who was a priest and he had the other one who lived comfortably with all the money that they had and didn't want any part of the overseas problem and thought we should unload it. So he went to his uh, representative in Barbados and told him to find some family, a decent family, who makes a great effort for the island plus themselves and offer to them. This man comes over to my uh, brother Victor and says, Vic, how would you like to buy that building? I said, I'd love it. And to my father. My father said, I've been watching that building for years now and feeling that we own it. Within, I would say, one week, they cabled back to uh, England. The news came back and we owned the building. Now, these are all dreams, but the dreams are the, in the eyes of the world are now true. These buildings are now ours, based upon the dreams of my father and my brother Victor. My other brothers didn't do it. They are sharing in the fruit, but they did not actually put it in motion. My brother Victor did. It started off as a child. In some strange way, he felt it would work this way. Why, I do not know. My father confessed years later that's what he lived by, for he had nothing. Didn't have a nickel in this world, and really believed that his dreams would come true. Now his name is Joseph. You're told in scripture, Joseph was the dreamer. Behold, this dreamer cometh. And so Joseph comes, the eleventh son of Jacob. And the brothers sold him into slavery, into Egypt. But he didn't care. He told his brothers when they discovered who he was, equal to Pharaoh. For he could interpret dreams and Pharaoh raised him to the point where he was equal to Pharaoh in the rulership of Egypt. And he said to them, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. Take that to heart. If something appears now to go wrong, you will think, well now, it's going wrong. No, it's really going right. God meant it for good. Those who are working against you seemingly, they mean it for evil, but forget it. Don't give any power to that. You remain faithful to the vision. If I am not unfaithful to the vision, it can't go wrong. If I now move away and give power to the shadows in my world, it will go wrong. But if I know exactly what I am doing, and regardless of what seemingly is happening in my world, ignore it and remain faithful to the vision. He kept the divine vision in time of trouble. When he stood before King Agrippa, Paul said, O oh, King, I was not forgetful, I was not unfaithful to the heavenly vision. He kept it, and then it had to come to pass.